Good afternoon. I'm hoping I find you well. It's that time of the day again where we have our lunch and learn with uh, Prosper, your host from Live Long Digital. So I'm supposing you've had a fantastic week so far. And guess what? We have just come to the end of the month of uh, May. So there's quite a lot that you can report back and say, you know what? I've achieved this. Oh, I've got this uh, during this month. And cheers for chilling in, Tyre. Thank you so much for the support. It's been phenomenal. I'm hoping that the month of May has been fantastic for yourself as it has been really, really, really good for us as well. Now, today's uh, topic is real simple. We're talking about the simple secrets uh, to actually make your business grow. Okay. And I'm supposing if you're an online um, entrepreneur that's, you know, selling either things online or you are a digital entrepreneur or a digital marketer like some of us, this will be a video for you to watch. I see JD Fierro just tuned in. Thank you so much for your support there. Right. Um, with our day-to-day -day work, we are working with uh, coaches, consultants, and um, small to medium businesses that really want to market, scale, and grow their business. And what we find is most of them are trying to shift a lot to start working um, online. And it's not an easy shift to be. You know why? Because the whole online space is a little bit congested. So that's the reason why we have these 30 minute chats just to see what is actually working in the trenches and to actually find out how we can help you market, scale, and grow your business, all right? So as far as I'm concerned, the goal of every digital entrepreneur that I know is to actually get more clients and to actually generate a lot more revenue for your online business. And I assume that is the same goal that you might have for your business, Probably that's why you are here and that's why you will find this video um, useful for you. All right. But then obviously, as anyone would uh, come across, how do you actually achieve this goal? All right. What is it that you should do in order to scale your business and to actually grow it online? Okay. You need to know what it is that you need to do and what sort of actionable uh, strategies that you need to take. Um, you know, into consideration. You know why? Because there's a lot out there that we're being bombarded with. So it's very difficult to get lost. It's very difficult to take on strategies that are not actually going to work with your business or that are not going to be compatible with what you're hoping to achieve. All right. So half the time, you all you just need is a detailed action plan with the right kind of steps and what sort of um, you know, strategies you can take on for so that you can go from point A, which is where you are right now, to point B, where you actually want to be, all right? And you actually need a powerful system that you can use that can generate um, success for you. Now, since this is May, like I was saying, um, I've been in business for about three years now, going on to four, um, full-time, and the business has been running for about five years. I've come up with quite a lot of things that uh, I meet with small business people and find out exactly what is stopping them from growing, all right? There's a lot more things that um, people don't quite realize. And the best lessons that I've learned in the past three years of business is we need to focus on you, the driver of the engine, more than anything else, okay? Um, when people go into business, they are not realizing that the most important thing is for them to reach out the targeted market with their message. They are just concentrating on the media side of things, the Facebook, um, Instagram, and all those things that constantly change. Now, that's more like chasing, um, you know, a waterfall, okay? So, you know, in the last month, um, our business actually really crossed the third, um, you know, year mark and business has been fantastic. Revenue and profit has been at record levels. And lately, a lot more people have begun noticing, you know, my prosperous little business and they've started asking questions. Ray Rink, thank you so much for tuning in, my man. You know, yeah, people have started noticing, you know, how we're developing every single day. And, you know, they've started asking questions and... Most of the times people are asking me, Prosper, what's your secret? All right. 
Um, people like Ray Ring, people like Taya, who have known me for quite a while, would acknowledge that I always show up. No matter who is there to watch, no matter what's happening around me, I schedule the time to show up to the people that I believe are my audience. All right? Joel, how's it going there? And people have been asking me, what's your secret? How have you built your business from nothing to something? And for those that have been watching me for a while, you know my story that I started off from Zimbabwe and I came here six years ago. I came here, I had nothing and I just really was struggling to get around. You know why? Because it was a whole culture shock. It was a whole difference in methodologies and everything else around me was just not working. Up until I got a job in a restaurant where I was working as a kitchen hand and from then on, I started doing the social media and that's how I then grew this business into what it is today, you know? And some of the times when I get to think about that story, you know, the questions that people ask me all the time, it makes me just think of the fundamental principles that I actually use to build my business. And today I'm just going to give you about six of those. You really need to listen carefully, all right? And talking about listening, you need to know who you are serving. All right. You need to listen to your customers. It's not about what you want to sell. It's what your customers want to buy. Half of the time we notice that we get too romantic about the product. We get too romantic about how good our website looks. But are we considering what the client actually really needs? You know, sometimes we're just putting out product after product or content after content. But is your customer really digesting that content or are they utilizing any of that to make informed decisions so that they can make a purchase? All right. So you really need to put that into consideration. It's not what you want to sell. It's what your customers want to buy. You know why? Because they're the ones that are going to be voting for your existence with their wallet or with their credit cards. All right. So the best ideas, you know, if you're really listening carefully, come from your best customers. They're the ones that tell you because you know why they're following you. Maybe these videos are too long. Maybe some people can't really comprehend. But my answer to that is I then repurpose these videos into a blog that I can then put onto other channels. All right. So people don't necessarily have to watch me live as long as I show up on the day and the time that I promise. And for the duration that I promise, I will be putting that content in other channels where you can watch and where you can con consume that content at your own convenience. OK, so Ray Ring says so true. I've changed my website a bunch. But for what? <laughs> Exactly. You know what? We're spending five hours, six hours, 10 hours looking at that website, Ray Ring. So for you, it starts becoming a thing. Your customer only has three seconds to look at what they want on that website. All right? So you want to make sure you've got all the things, you know, maybe first of all, something that helps you collect their email address so that you can actually push, you know, your agenda to them via email or pixel the website Ray Rink so that when you know you you running campaigns you're just uh, targeting people that already know like and trust you you know why because they've consumed your content all right so I've got um the online prosperity program which I conduct with my uh, with my clients across the country or online and I'm always consistent about that yes you're right um Ray Rink you know and one day I actually got a call from a training director that lives in Brisbane that's another city within Australia okay and then you know, he, he said to me, this may sound crazy, Prosper, but I want to license out your program so that we can conduct it as your own, as our own. You know what that made me feel? That made me humble enough to be like, whoa, this is something that I created so that it's easy for me to understand. But some training institute really wants to use this. So we are in the talks to actually see what it is that we can come out of, um, you know, the, the licensing part of it. So that was three months ago. All right. So now I've got two large clients, you know, on a, and I think I'm going to be doing a multi-year licensing agreement with one of my products. All right. And that was never part of the program. When I went out to create the online prosperity blueprint, this was just basically for me to utilize so that it's easy for me to explain since English is not my first language. 
Little did I know that now this has become something that people actually treasure and want to utilize within their training um, themselves there. So I'm not going to be rigid about it. All right. I'm just going to make sure that I provide them with the value and the back end and the training stuff that they need so that they can utilize that online prosperity blueprint for their business. Chedu, how are you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So like I was saying, you need to continuously add value to your customers. You never know how they interpret your content. You never know how they're going to utilize that content for themselves because what we think they need is not exactly how they're going to use it themselves. All right. So always be out there listening to the people that are paying you money. Everybody else doesn't really matter, guys. All right. So this then goes back to another thing um, that people don't quite do when they want to grow their business. People are not doing their homework. All right. Once you have a niche that's decided, once you already have your customers and once you already have, um, you know, people that you're already working with, people are not going in to actually discover why those people came in to, to work with them. You're not doing your homework and finding out what actually makes those clients choose you over your competition. You see, when I work with the clients, I do my homework in advance, first of all, in their industry, their company issues, and um, also their challenges. How's it going, Matthew? Thank you so much for tuning in today. All right. So when I work with a client, I, I, I do my homework first. You want to discover things about that client's industry, um, what they're watching, what they're listening to, and what issues are they're facing that made them come to you for your services. All right. Now, we've got the Internet and it's very easy to find out stuff about some some somebody's industry. Just Google it. It's that simple. This information is available at our fingertips. All right. So. Today, actually, I um, was talking to a totally different client um, that I've never worked with, somebody who's a celebrity chef, all right? That's new for me. So what I had to do was discover what other people within, um, you know, his industry are already doing so that we go in either repeat that or do something better. Because why invent mediocrity when you can copy genius, all right? So... It's, 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 it's really simple. You really want to do your homework, find out exactly why these people are buying from you. It's not because you've got a really good product, find out what else, what else is out there for them. And then just go out there and, and, and make sure you're serving those clients and making sure that you're giving them exactly what it is they're after. All right. Because at the end of the day, once you are prepared you know you can then go out and attract the same kind of people and it's easier and it's cheaper for you. You know why? Because preparation is the mark of a professional. Once you're prepared and you already know the needs of your customer before they, they know what's wrong with them, then they assume you've got a solution for them. All right? Does that, does that make some sense then? So people still don't know what they want. And that's the reason why Henry Ford, uh, when he was asked why he created um, um, an automobile, he said, if people were asked what they wanted, they would have said they wanted a faster horse. All right. So if you're going in with your niche, go and do your homework, guys. Just because people have bought from you, you need to find out why they bought from you over your competition. And that way it will get you um, to stick into the game and you know their needs before they even ask. All right. And once you've gotten those people into your world and they now see what you're doing, you gotta be constantly on the offense. And I call this delivering guys, you know, um, Success is preparation, meeting opportunity. Oh yeah, definitely, Ray. Do you see where we're going with this? I also noticed that you are preparing uh, those Amazon buttons. I didn't even know they existed. And now I see why this is important because you already know your e-commerce uh, customers and you've already anticipated what they might need. That's why you're already ordering those uh, Amazon buttons. I really um, appreciated that you brought that into my world. I didn't even know. So that's one guy who's actually living and breathing, um, you know, uh, what, what he preaches and actually uh, going out there investigating about his industry. That's pretty good uh, day, Mr. Mr. Ray. All right. So, I want to tell you something, a few, I think it was 
Where are we in May right now? May, April, February. I think it was a few months ago. Um, I went. Um, I went on a on a trip around Australia. You know, and um, what what that meant was, I completely left what I was doing work wise. Uh, I was not in touch with anyone. I just really needed to. Um, you know, uh, I really, really just needed to. Uh, rejuvenate and start the year fresh. Okay, so I we went on a trip around Australia, and I had a call while I was out there from a new client that has now turned into a twelve thousand a month client. All right, so everything that I could have done for this client, I could have just done while I was overseas. I mean, while while I was out traveling. But when I s realized how big the potential was with this client. I cut the trip in half and then we came back, all right? But as soon as we came back, we had to drive about 6,000 kilometers. And as soon as I landed, I showed up the next morning and I delivered a presentation to them and we got the deal, all right? What I mean here is just because you're doing something or you're in the middle of something, if you can help it, be there for your clients, guys. Because they're not going to care what you're going through or maybe you're not feeling well today or, oh my God, you just had all this jet lag or whatever. They care about what you can do for them. So you got to be there to deliver. And did this client that I now have know that I was going through all of that? No. You know what I mean? You need to perform no matter what. No excuses, no whining. And when you deliver... Despite the challenges and difficulties you might be facing, it is also a chance to actually reinforce your own reputation and trust that these customers now have for you. Ray Ring, we want to see more pics from your epic road trip, Matt, with the family. <laughs> of course, I will try and keep uh, posting them because we had a guy that we were driving with that was taking mad marvelous photos you know and i haven't really um looked at them but yeah you right about that ray now I, I will definitely put them up so guys no matter how you're feeling these people that are going to be hiring you to do work for them they are expecting you to be there for their business especially with um, my online business i am holding in my hands people's hopes and dreams all right i understand that fully a lot of people have worked, they've sacrificed a lot of things in order for their business to, to, to run to where it is. And I'm just enhancing those dreams for them. I'm just encouraging their dreams so that they move forward. So who am I to stop that person's reality coming into fruition? So you should also look at your business in that way. What are you actually delivering instead of the service? All right. Are you helping people's lives to become happier? Are you what are you delivering? And once you understand that you will stay in business and that's how you grow. You know why? Because you particularly care about the outcome instead of how you feel today. All right. A lot of people don't show up to work and like, oh, I'm not feeling well. Or I've got a headache. I'll look at that tomorrow. But your client's business is, is still running. All right, you got to make sure that the trust that they've put in you is not going to be put to jeopardy. So you got to show up and deliver to these people. All right, you got to perform no matter what. No excuses, no whining. And when you actually do deliver, your reputation goes up. That then helps them, you know, channel all I um, actually recommend you to some of the people that, um, you know, you might be able to, to work with, all right? In order for you to actually grow, guys, there's one thing that I've discovered. Once people are in startup mode or if they've started getting a bit of traction, they now increase overheads, all right? You can notice, look at this. I'm working from like um, a home office, all right? And I show up every single day for my clients, all right? You see, this, this is not a country club, guys. This is your business. All right, so some people want to get all the luxuries of, you know, you know, I don't know what it is, coffees with names or whatever, and they want to work in different places. Just make sure you don't have too many overheads, okay? Now, business really is not a social club. A lot of people that I see, the reason why they're not growing is because they have too many overheads and little cash flow. You want to make sure that it, it, the, 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 the scales are tipped the other way. You've got very little overheads and a lot of cash flow. All right. So don't go in and have an, a very expensive office lease and have tons of overhead. 
Just try and run lean up until you're making real money. All right? It's, it's one of those things. You know, if you can't be disciplined with expenses and overhead, then you shouldn't be in business. All right? You got to make the money and keep it. All right? So that when you do get around to um, needing it for expansion, it's there. Instead of you having to scrap around for paying rent, scrap around for expensive equipment or whatever cars you guys might want to buy, run lean, guys. Trust me, nobody really cares up until you're actually big enough for people to take notice. All right? The other thing that's really crippling a lot of businesses is there's so much information out there, but people are not really consuming the right kind or they're over consuming and never implement. All right. You see, I belong and participate to just three masterminds and uh, I think it's two industry groups. And I invest in attending one to two um, conferences each year. One is coming up in July, you know. So this kind of activity keeps me sharp and it, it keeps me in the loop of what's actually going within the digital marketing industry. And guess what? It's always changing and somebody's always coming to give you their own agenda and really trying to change your focus and, you know, m make you feel inadequate within your own business. Stand your ground. That's the only way you're going to grow. You know, so me attending these events, it keeps me sharp and in the loop of what's actually happening within the industry so that I maintain my position of authority and as the go to guy within the industry. You know, in the last three years, um, some of these ideas that I've gained from, from this mentorship or masterminds, they've had a huge influence in how I operate my business. If you're going to operate your business based on a Facebook ad that just came in and you go and watch a webinar, it's going to be, you are constantly going to be, you know, bombarded with shiny objects and it's not going to help you at all. All right. Um, what conferences do you attend? Right. Um, there's a social media conference that happens around here um, in, in, in Melbourne. I've, I've never really done the ones in the States because at the end of the day, you know, it would be too much trouble. But we've got three uh, digital marketing conferences that happen here and I attend two of those. And I think I'm going to be uh, exhibiting in the next one in 2018. Fingers crossed I'm big enough to hold my own stand there. All right. Um, the one other thing that a lot of people I find that I work with, um, especially in the SEO part, is they don't quite know what their niche is. All right. Let's face it. You can't be all things to everyone. All right. You, you, your marketing budget is not big enough like Coca-Cola who wants everybody to be happy. You know why? As soon as you open a Coca-Cola, you open up happiness. All right. So it's going to be too difficult if you're too broad. So, you know, I decided a few months ago, um, a few years ago when I actually started to actually just specialize in training and speaking about online prosperity. All right. And this is all based on the blueprint that I created. And then from there, that's where I now have, um, you know, a course on how to find the right kind of clients, a course on how to actually create the right kind of content, a course on how to convert and a course on how to actually connect everything together. Or I've got a one on one mastermind where we actually implement this into your business. And if this is something that you want, just type in blueprint and you can start the 30 day challenge that we've got on there. So I was still saying, guys, pick a niche. You can never be everything to everyone. All right. Um, we, we don't have a big enough budget. And if you're going to be trying to be everything to everyone, you're going to have to please all those people. And I don't think you've got all of that. All right. So it's 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 quite easy for you to write content to the people that actually appreciate it. Write content to the people that actually understand it. It's just as simple as that. You know, most people would rather hire a specialist than somebody who's just a generalist. OK, so my goal pretty much is to just become, you know, the training and coaching resource for online prosperity, which is your how to start scale and grow an online business. All right. So I'm currently developing a website. You can pretty much check it out. It's called the Online Prosperity Syndicate. It's got several products just for that. All right. So you want to pick a, a niche small enough. Um, you know, to own, but also large enough to be able to be profitable within it. Okay. So 
in any case, this is something that you really got to consider. Like I say, you can't be everything to everyone because if you're going to be too vague, like, you know, the age group from 25 to 65, which is what maybe Facebook offers you, it's too big. You cannot reach to people within that age group. 25 year olds have a different mindset to those people that are 26 years old. All right. So, you know, it's, it's quite simple. So. Those six things that I just mentioned, guys, if you're watching all the way or if you are going to or if you just joined us and you want to uh, revert back to it. Those are the six biggest lessons that I've actually learned in my business so far. You see, and I'm sure I'm going to be learning more as I go on because I'm working with people directly, helping their businesses start, scale and grow. And, you know, it's, it's really an exciting place to be um, owning and, 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 and growing a really dynamic business where I can see other people flourish through the work of my hands. Okay. So some nights I'm really, <laughs> I'm really, really fired up and I, and I can't really go to sleep in a good way though. You know why? Because I think it was Oprah. She said that, you know, when I think about the future, the future is so bright. It actually burns my eyes. Okay. So this is exactly how I feel right now. And I hope it's the same for you in the future. Now we're going into the second um, half of the year. Well, it's still practically the first half, but look at this. We already finished month number five. Are you where you really want to be within your business? Are you attracting the right kind of clients? Are you giving them the right kind of, um, you know, are you attracting the right kind of people? Do you actually know the pain of the people that you're serving? Do you have an ultimate payoff and the product to serve that pain? All right. And then pretty much after that, are you engaging those people once you've attracted them? Are you educating them about what's possible with your products? What's possible with your business and everything else that comes along with how you can help them be, do and have the lifestyle that they choose? Are you inspiring them to want more? Are you helping them to, to be energized about doing what they do best every single day? Are you providing value in every piece of content that you're putting out there? And are you positioning yourself so that you become the high, um, you know, paid expert, professional coach or consultant that you actually are or small business person, um, you know, that has a brand that people go to consistently. All right. Now, once you've done that, are you actually converting these people in a way that you're no longer having to chase them to sell to them every single day? Are you actually solving their problems? Because as entrepreneurs, we are in this business to solve problems. We're not in it to sell anything to anyone. OK. And I mean, obviously, we are the here to sell. But, you know, if people hate being sold to. But if you present it to them in such a way that it's easy for them to understand and they look at your solution as the go to solution, they will know that you're the person they can trust and they will purchase from you. OK, are you actually doing any online marketing that will help to turn your advertising into profits? All of that stuff. Are you actually doing the right things that will generate the right kind of incomes that you really, really want? What is it that you really want out of this business? OK, stop just trading the water and, you know, playing with yourself. Go in, really engage with these people and put out calls to action. You know why? So that people would know what you're offering and make the purchases from you. OK, and once you've done all of that, I don't know if you can see this part here. Where is it? Okay, let's move it. Right? <laughs> and once you've done all of that, create the right kind of relationships, all right, that you're going to perpetually, um, you know, um, have these people recommending other people to you and buying from you as well. You know, create the kind of authority that when you put out content there, people can't wait to read it, listen to it or watch it. OK, and in the process, you're branding yourself in a way that people will get to recognize what your brand is all about. And then you're creating a community of people that will constantly buy stuff from you. If you watched yesterday's video, I mentioned how you only need a thousand customers to make sure that your business is profitable and enjoyable. All right. So, guys, these are the best lessons that I've learned in the last um, three years of doing business, either for myself or actually helping others. And I would like you to actually start, um, you know, your um, um, 
journey with the online prosperity blueprint where you're taking 30 days. I've created a video on how to actually capture the right kind of clients. I've created a video on how to create the content. I've created a video on how to actually convert these people. And I've created the video for you to connect with the people. So type in blueprint so that I can send you through a copy of the 30 day and you can start your journey to having a business that's profitable and enjoyable. In the meantime, I really hope that May has been a very fruitful year for you. And I really hope that uh, the month of uh, June is going to start off with a big bang and you are going to be on target with, you know, your goals, your hopes and your dreams and your aspirations. In the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys next month.